Forest Legacy is about keeping working forest for us. We would not have been able to conserve this property and keep it intact without Forest Legacy. Just over half of our nation's forest lands are privately owned. They provide a multiplicity of benefits from forest products, water, recreation, wildlife, scenery, clean air, clean water. I think if people knew more, they'd be even more excited and grateful that this was established and that we've managed to keep it rolling. The Forest Legacy Program is a tremendous outcome of combining professional forestry with the American ideal of private land and the right to use it as you see fit. The Forest Legacy Program was established to protect environmentally important forest areas from conversion to non-forest uses through either acquiring the land for public ownership or through the purchase of a conservation easement. A conservation easement restricts development but allows private owners to manage their forest in perpetuity. This unique program is administered by the U.S. Department of Agriculture Forest Service but relies on a partnership including state and local organizations. While forest lands have experienced a tremendous recovery over the last century, the threat of losing large tracts of privately owned woodlands to development and other non-forest uses still exist. The issue came to a head in, I think it was 1988, when uh, Diamond International uh, Paper Corporation uh, had announced that it was going to sell off a large tract. They were one of a few big landowners in the Northeast, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York. A few companies owning millions of acres that had traditionally been used for paper production. A lot of these paper companies ended up being acquired by not just out-of-state interests, but out-of-country interests. It became international corporations. The new owners didn't have that tie to the land. That pressure, that worry, led to um, Senator Rudman from New Hampshire and Senator Leahy from Vermont to craft a, a bill to make uh, create this Northern Forest Lands Council. You can't just swoop in and say where the, the state or the federal government is going to just grab the land. It doesn't work that way. Let's find a way that we can work with landowners and preserve the land. It was sort of seen as a compromise. You could, the federal government could have the money um, and to allow the states to protect these lands um, without taking them over. It's a blending of the intentions and efforts of a number of different parties. The state is in the lead. It's a federal program that they're opting into. There are federal guidelines, but the state is running it. Um, so I think it's a key thing is that this is the state and private landowners working in a federal construct. It makes sense. We have some wonderful treasures in this country. This is something for all of us and for the next generation. And people understand that. The 1990 Farm Bill listed Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York, and Washington State as eligible participants in the Forest Legacy Program. Just over $4 million was appropriated during the initial year of the program. I'm proud of that, but a whole lot of people worked on it. President George H.W. Bush signed it. Then the devil, of course, is in the details. We had to make it work. And we did. Vermont being ready, uh, we couldn't see a reason not to try and have the very first program success made in Vermont, and, and it happened. The 1,600-acre Cow Mountain Pond property in Granby, Vermont, was the first forest legacy project. The project was a collaborative effort, including the town, state of Vermont, and nonprofit partners. The town of Granby, population 71, purchased their part of the property through the sale of Adirondack chairs, birdhouses, and potluck dinners. With the completion of the agreement in April 1993, two parcels of land encompassing the pond that were at risk of being developed were conserved, providing recreation, scenery, and timber in perpetuity. In fact, the, the first forest legacy project ever was in, in Vermont, Cow Mountain Pond, and I think we're rightfully proud of that uh, and, it's, and what it's kicked off, this cascade of subsequent projects with these uh, that provide critical linkages, they're working forests, they have recreational access. 
For a growing number of private landowners who are passionate about the stewardship of their land, the Forest Legacy Program provided, as it does today, a win-win opportunity by allowing them to manage their property in an economical and sustainable way, while at the same time maintaining these treasured properties for future generations. Wright Preston of Richmond, Vermont, recognizes the program's balance and benefits. My uh, grandparents, they acquired 1,900 acres, and they bought it for their enjoyment, for their kids' enjoyment, and for the next generation's enjoyment. My parents passed on in the mid-90s, and after that occurred, there was pressure from my siblings to sell the property, convert it into cash. I had a different idea and was looking to keep the forest land intact. We would not have been able to conserve this property and keep it intact without Forest Legacy. The primary objective is working forest, a working landscape. That's, that's the, the number one focus Water quality is a very big component of this property. We have to factor that into where the harvest is done. We have to factor that into maintaining uh, skid roads, implementing all the acceptable management practices on the property. One unique characteristic is it's a large parcel in Chittenden County. And it's just, it's, in terms of an economic driver, parcels like this are really important. Well, the, of course, primary benefit is I get to come back every year. <laughs> so I spend three or four months a year here. Worked here close to 30 years. You know, it's not a whole lot different than a lot of the other jobs that I do, but other than the fact that, you know, this is where, this is where I like to come and it's home for us here, so. Implementing sustainable forest management practices on large, privately owned properties helps local businesses that depend on timber and forest products to remain stable and thrive in the community. Maintaining a working forest not only has economic benefits, it conserves critical habitat for fish and wildlife, as well as unique recreational opportunities. In 1999, with help from a key partner, the Nature Conservancy, the 5,000-plus acre property owned by the Morrisville Water and Light Company was sold to Forest Parks and Recreation to create the Green River Reservoir State Park. The project combined funding from the Forest Legacy Program and the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board and to this day demonstrates a variety of benefits while also maintaining a strong relationship with the local community. There was a great deal of concern on the public part of the public in the Morrisville area, particularly from historic users, that the character not change. We worked very hard to work with the local people in Lamoille County to build support for, for the state park with the help of the Nature Conservancy and, and other groups, grassroots groups like ours. So the land is able to be purchased. There's no doubt that it is among the most spectacular recreational resources in the state of Vermont. There's 19 miles of undeveloped shoreline. It's one of the primary purposes of Green River Reservoir State Park is to maintain it in its wilderness-like character. Every time you have success, it breeds more confidence that state government, federal government, local government, citizens groups like Friends of Green River Reservoir can get it right and deliver important public benefits. These organizations and the wonderful people who work for them are the heroes of the story. And the result is an incredibly beautiful, wild area that will be ours for generations to come. Successful forest legacy projects continue to deliver public benefits of managed forest land and recreational access while also addressing other important purposes, like conserving habitat connectivity and wildlife travel corridors. By purchasing strategically located forests for public ownership, the Green Mountain Wildlife Corridor Project connected the northern and southern portions of the Green Mountain National Forest. This created a protected corridor and conserved critical habitat for black bear and other wildlife that require large home ranges. While we were involved in that project with our partners, uh, we ended up sort of taking a, stepping back and taking a landscape view and we realized the risks to those private ownerships of being developed and breaking up the continuity between the Northern Green Mountain National Forest and the Southern Green Mountain National Forest. This is one of the first kind of landscape projects that the state took on where we were looking 
really from 20,000 feet at a, a landscape that would involve thousands of acres. And Legacy was the perfect fit for the private forestry and turned out to be a real catalyst for other funding that was available, both for state ownership and lands to be added to the National Forest and to the Appalachian Trail. We and our partners were able to purchase some very key parcels using the Forest Legacy money. Um, and if that hadn't been there, I don't believe there's another funding source that would have allowed us to do the conservation work in this corridor that, that we actually were able to do. We're not just conserving the lands, but we're also protecting a working forest. And part of that uh, is important, of course, to the population of Vermont, the people of Vermont. Uh, they've got a way of making a living, but also for the bears making a living, when you've got a working forest and you've got a diversity of habitats, and that produces a diversity of food that the bears need. The Farm and Wilderness Camp is one of several landowners within this Green Mountain Wildlife Corridor. By permanently conserving some of their woodlands under the Forest Legacy Program, they help secure this critical corridor used by Vermont's growing black bear population. And bears aren't the only ones that benefit from this conserved landscape. This has allowed us to preserve not just this 440 acres, but another 3,000 acres south of here. We have over 1,000 children that come here for camp every summer. And they come here for the beauty, they come here for the integrity of the habitat, for knowing that there's bears lurking around in the woods just behind their cabin. Campers build, uh, on average, two timber frame cabins or other structures per summer. And they're using the wood that's from this land. So this land allows us to have uh, recreational use for our campers. It also is a driver of the local economy. This forest conservation program that started in five states in the early 1990s expanded nationally. By 2010, the Forest Legacy Program served 49 states and four U.S. territories, conserving over 2.6 million acres by 2016. Every state with their uh, Forest Legacy Program is really able to put a state focus on it, which makes uh, Forest Legacy unique. So although it's a federal program, it allows the state to assess the needs and direct the program. As the Forest Legacy Program expanded to other regions, additional benefits were achieved. In Florida, forests are not only extremely important for the products and timber sector, but also for the vast outdoor recreation opportunities, wildlife habitats, and the clean water these forests provide to both the millions of annual visitors and growing number of residents. Florida is very unique. We are, as an entire state, dependent on groundwater to a large extent. Water is becoming the, probably the number one key to, to Florida's health and environment into the future. We have 20 million people here now. So with people comes commerce, comes a, a thriving economy, but also challenges both our water supply and our water quality. So it's a matter of understanding where the pressures are, understanding where the resources are, and then working hard to balance both of them. The spring behind me is one of the largest in the world. Silver Springs, an average flow of 550 million gallons a day. But it's been declining in flow, and it's been declining in water quality. The Conservation Trust for Florida has been working in this area for about two and a half years. We identified 10,000 acres of forest land just north of Silver Springs. It is a uh, part of the immediate recharge area for Silver Springs. Silver Springs being one of the largest and definitely probably the most iconic springs in Florida. The 4,900 acre Silver Springs Forest was purchased in 2015 from the Rainier Corporation through a historic partnership between government agencies and private and environmental groups. The St. Johns River Water Management District, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, and the Conservation Trust for Florida all contributed matching funds to leverage the Forest Legacy Grant needed to complete the purchase. The Florida Forest Service administers the Forest Legacy Program for the state and will be involved in ongoing management. A bunch of like-minded folks coming together for all the right reasons, uh, springs protection, uh, wildlife habitat, outdoor public recreation. Uh, we just can't, can't thank the partnership enough. Some areas will be uh, restored, especially where the water is flowing. 
so that we can back that water up, slow it down, give it a chance to recharge like it used to do, and keep sediments and erosional materials out of uh, the rivers that they feed. Just adjacent lands, this property is connected to about 11,000 acres, but in the bigger picture, we're connected to over 600,000 acres of publicly owned lands. So this is one of those connection pieces. The St. John's River uh, Water Management District will be managing it, but it'll be open for hiking, bird watching, hunting. Uh, we really see it as a great success story. There were so many steps in this process and in getting here. Uh, this is really an accomplishment that should be celebrated. Florida's success with the Forest Legacy Program has also been experienced in the southwest states of Arizona and New Mexico. In these states, by conserving riparian areas, the program conserves their sources of water, both in quantity and quality. With management of the national forests in the southwest, Arizona and New Mexico, we think of ourselves as being the primary water steward. If we do one thing well, we manage the land so we can capture, store, and release water for the needs of people and the environment. So the lands that fit best in that kind of a scheme within the Forest Legacy Program are gonna be lands that are on and around water resources in particular, riparian forests. National forests in New Mexico and Arizona are one of the primary sources of drinking water for Albuquerque, for Phoenix, for Tucson. And the Forest Legacy Program lands, those properties contribute to that water quantity and quality both, as well as to wildlife habitat. The Forest Legacy Program is a very important uh, program to the state of New Mexico because we do have large landscapes that will be protected forever. Uh, you know, they're a real treasure to the state and we really, we really adore the program here in New Mexico. The successful High Country Ranch Project is located just west of the Carson National Forest in New Mexico. Well, uh, High Country Ranch has a very unique, uh, two very unique, uh, aspects. One is the amount of old growth timber that's on that ranch. So we have these wonderful old growth forests uh, up there. The other unique aspect is that it is at the headwaters of the Vallecitos River. A lot of the streams that flow into the Vallecitos and then the Vallecitos flows down into the Chama, uh, into the Rio Grande, and down towards the cities of Santa Fe and Albuquerque. In southeast Arizona, the Arizona Division of Forestry partnered with the Nature Conservancy in a showcase project. The San Pedro River Project was the first forest legacy project in the nation to focus on desert riparian forest and its many assets, including migratory and endangered birds and the water that draws them to the San Pedro River. Conserving this forest that supports nearly half of all U.S. bird species highlights the critical importance of riparian corridors in the desert southwest. In the southwest, there's uh, you know, quite a bit of variety in terms of elevation and landform and uh, vegetative types. All of those lands are important because they're watersheds and they provide habitat for a wide array and a rich diversity of wildlife species. It provides a tremendous opportunity to protect a, a very important riparian landscape. They are a migratory habitat for many neotropical migratory bird species, including the endangered southwest willow flycatcher and the threatened yellow-billed cuckoo. The Nature Conservancy was a key partner by providing a link between the agencies implementing the Forest Legacy Program and the landowners that were interested in protecting their properties. One day we received a telephone call from the Nature Conservancy, it was Peter Warren in the Tucson office, mm -hmm. asking us to have lunch with him and over lunch the <clears throat> idea of a conservation easement through the Forest Legacy Program came up. Um, we were just overjoyed, we hadn't actually got around to doing anything right. about our ideas but right. here it was coming to us. Having put the conservation easement on our property through the Forest Legacy Program gives us some assurance that the value of the property, the, cons the conservation value of the property will be maintained for a long time after we're involved with it. Conserving these valuable and threatened forested properties in perpetuity has tremendous ecosystem implications. 
the permanence of the agreement has become an important factor that develops trust in more complicated arrangements. In 2016, the Trust for Public Land arranged a successful conservation easement with the Stoltz Land and Lumber Company using Forest Legacy funding. The 10,000-acre property adjacent to Whitefish, Montana, is critical to ensuring safe drinking water and providing connected habitat for many threatened and endangered species. It was the right location, the right place, and the right time. And it was the right thing to do. And it, it's that simple. This project really shows what the Forest Legacy program is all about. That it has all the components of Forest Legacy. It has a strong forest um, component for um, future logging, providing jobs for the community. It has endangered species. It has water for the community of whitefish. The community is behind this project. They floated a bond where they're helping to pay for the cost share of this project. So even though we are putting a conservation easement on the property, the property owner still has the option and is encouraged to manage the forest as a working forest. Why I admire and very much support the Forest Legacy Program is that it allowed us to keep our lands in private ownership. We still own it, we can still manage it the way we want to, we can treat the forest the way we want to, and we've always been very good stewards of that land. Our lands are part of the American Tree Farm System and have been certified through that program since 1964 and continue to be certified today. And so that's the basis of, of how we built our management plan for this conservation easement. Um, we have about 40,000 acres of timberland that we own and manage. Um, we operate a sawmill and a cogeneration facility that produces electricity and steam. We produce about 60 million board feet a year of lumber. We employ 120 people and those are good family raising jobs. Our little company puts about 25 to 30 million dollars a year with the spending into our local economy. Besides protecting the town's drinking water source and economy, the Haskell Basin property will provide a number of other important benefits. The vision for the Whitefish Trail is to create a 55 mile loop trail surrounding Whitefish Lake. This Haskell Basin parcel is such a key component to allow us to keep the trail off the road and provide the greatest user experience. The trail system has created this benefit for our local businesses like we would have never expected. People end up spending the day, you know, out on the Whitefish Trail or exploring the lands, you know, Whitefish Mountain Resort, and then they walk downtown, they go to the restaurants, and so there's so much more time spent in our community. This project is within critical lynx habitat, critical grizzly bear habitat, bull trout, all these threatened and endangered species, plus a lot of species of concern. The landscape connectivity role of this property can't be overstated. All of the federal land adjoining it has been designated as critical for recovery for grizzly bears and lynx, both federally listed species. Uh, and we have both of those species on the property. They require large, undeveloped landscapes and they use huge areas. A, a, a male grizzly bear's home range will be over 300 square miles. In this mountainous region, all of the high elevation lands are public lands. The, the middle elevation lands are private and often corporate timber lands. And then the valley bottoms are, are smaller private ownerships. With the grizzly bear, they den up in the high elevation on the national forest lands, but they immediately come down in the springtime to the low elevation private lands. All of the big game animals that spend the summers in the high mountains come down in those low elevation lands and winter all year long. So without that entire matrix working together and conserved in a way that those animals can continue to use the landscape throughout the year, we don't have capacity to uh, support our populations. So those critical private lands pieces are vital to maintaining those populations. I really applaud the Forest Legacy Program. I mean, it's what made it, uh, along with a gentleman named Alex Diekman from the Trust for Public Lands. He was the facilitator and the one driving the train, and he uh, kept pushing us all, and we got there. Having an opportunity to protect these lands has made us realize um, that we actually, conservation is something that we all agree on because we all believe in this community and this place and we want to protect it. 
So I think the, the big thing for the Forest Legacy Program that I appreciate the, about the Forest Legacy Pro, Program is that it's, it's not a preservation program, it's a conservation program, and that it retains these working landscapes. And I think that's what's really important. So we have a lot of wilderness in Montana, and there's a real um, place for that, but there's a real place for these working landscapes as well. And I'm really excited about being able to manage these lands into the future, knowing that we're going to still have the clean air, clean water, and healthy wildlife habitat, and still produce the fiber and the jobs that support our economies and our society. Through working with many critical partners, more than 2.6 million acres of working forests have been permanently conserved through the Forest Legacy Program. What started as a program to conserve the northern forest lands of five states in the early 1990s has dramatically evolved over the last 25 years. Today, the Forest Legacy Program helps states and individual landowners identify and protect places that are at risk and important to all of us for a myriad of reasons, including economics, recreation, wildlife habitat, and securing drinking water. The same flexibility and attributes that led to this tremendous success will allow the program to continue to thrive and help conserve vulnerable forests and habitats in the future.